Gulch. Part of the entry of Peter Brandt and trainer Leroy Jolly. Gulch beat Broadbrush and eight other older horses in the Metropolitan Mile. Got an 18-pound weight break that day. Today he has a 10-pound weight break. Gulch was third in the classic, the Belmont Stakes. Jose Santos, the rider, he has never lost on Gulch. Won the Bayshore and the Wood. The other part of the brand entry, 1A, this is Gorky. Not known much about this colt. Been out just six times. Lightest weight in the field, 105 pounds. Just two career wins. Has never been in the money in a stakes race. And this will be interesting to see how Gorky fits into the plans here of Leroy Jolly. Antonio Grail is the uh, rider, won 14 riding titles at Thistledown before moving on to New York from the great Panamanian Jockey School. And I want to make Antonio Grail because uh, he's one of 18 children. Gorky could be the rabbit for the early speed. Keep an eye on 1A. Number two, seldom seen Sue, the only filly in the field of the Whitney Handicap, and only two fillies have ever won this race in 59 runnings. Seldom seen Sue won the grade one Milady at Hollywood, a race you saw earlier here on the show. To mention the only filly in this field is at 16 outs, won seven over $317,000, and the master is on board. Bill Shoemaker, winner of almost 8,700 races, over 970 stakes wins, 241 races worth over $100,000. He has not won the Whitney. Bill Shoemaker. The three horse, the morning line favorite, the outstanding handicap horse in training today. This is Broad Brush, winner of over $2.6 million. Interestingly enough, the high weight of 127, he has never won carrying this much weight. He is 11th on the money list, but could today, with a $173,100 first place check, move past spectacular bid to become ninth on the all-time list. Speaking of all time, that's what they say in Saratoga about Angel Cordero. 11 straight Saratoga titles. He just passed the 6,000 win mark. He has won two of the last three Whitney's. 84 on Slua Gold and 85 on Track Baron, Broadbrush, and Angel Cordero. Number four is Laquamette. Laquamet, owned by Virginia Craft Payson, is a son of Pleasant Colony. Won the 86 Jim Dandy at Saratoga. Laquamet, the number four horse, the rider is Jerry Bailey. His best year last year, Mounts earned over $4.4 million. He won the Travers here last year at Saratoga. The number five horse, the Bay Colt, the people like a lot here, Java Gold, trained by Mac Miller, the Rokeby Stable, uh, son of Key to the Mint, has won six of 11 stakes, won the grade one Remsen last fall at two, has never been worse than second in four starts this year. The rider, one of the best, Pat Day, won last year's Whitney on Horse of the Year, Ladies Secret, the nation's winningest rider, four of the last five years, Pat Day. And rounding out the field, Gone West, the number six horse, the Bay Colt, the $1.9 million Keeneland yearling sale. Horse, the Hickory Tree Stable, Woody Stevens train, Eddie Maple riding, Gone West. He won the drive by more than 12 lengths. There's Eddie Maple. He has never won the Whitney, but he is the last person to win the riding title at Saratoga in 1975 before Angel started his strength. That's the field, and a great one it is for the Whitney Handicap. Our thanks to the Daily Racing Forum for all their statistics. We'll be back with more in the Whitney. Today's Budweiser long shot is Gone West, one of the few high-priced yearlings to have proven worthy of his price tag. Gone West sold as a yearling for $1.9 million. And though he was slow to develop it too, he's come around quickly as a three-year-old. Gone West has been brilliant on occasion, like this runaway win in the Dwyer Handicap last time out. Earlier this year, he won the Gotham and the Withers, and he was second in the Wood Memorial and the Peter Pan. Carrying only 116 today, he receives 11 pounds from top weight broad brush. Versatile enough to be able to set the pace or to come from behind and ready to give his Hall of Fame trainer Woody Stevens his first victory in the Whitney Handicap, it's gone west. Today's Budweiser long shot. Five to one on the morning line. Gone West has now been bet down. You see the six horse at three to one, but they've all been bet down. Take a look at these odds now. The entry of Gulch and Gorky at seven to two. The two uh, horse seldom seen Sue, the filly, nine to one. The three horse Broad Brush is now a co-favorite. The handicap horse of $2.6 million is now at two to one. The four horse Laquamat, the Bay Colt, the four-year-old is at 17. The five horse is Java Gold, also at two to one. One, and then Gone West, our Budweiser long shot at 7-2. to two. The horses approaching the starting gate when we return. 
We will be ready to run the Whitney here at Saratoga. Stand by for this local break on ESPN. Just checking down the odds board, though, a little more money bet on Broad Brush to win 114,000 compared to 110 on Java Gold, but still very close. And there's Java Gold, and Chelsea put up her shut-up time for this three-year-old if he wants to go in the Travers with the big horses. He'll prove his point today, and the key issue here in this Whitney handicap is the weights. It is a handicap. The weights have been assigned by the racing secretary according to these horses' performances. Now, even though Java Gold is a grade one stakes winner last year as a two-year-old, his career has been somewhat infringed upon by a virus this year. He's shown great flashes of brilliance, and he's in very light, 113 pounds. You might make a note that his daddy, Key to the Mint, won the Whitney as a prep for the Travers. The same owner, not the same trainer, Elliot Birch trained him. They're following the same pattern, and I think he's very dangerous at 113 pounds. Another horse that'll have some weight on Broad Brush is Gulch, carrying 117 pounds. Well, as you said earlier, he doesn't get quite as big a break from uh, Broad Brush as he did in the Metropolitan, but he's a very good horse and capable of really running a big race. And interestingly enough, Jose Santos has never been beaten on Gulch, and Gulch has never been beaten on this racetrack. And Gulch worked five furlongs in 57 and two on Wednesday here. This is the number two horse, the only filly seldom seen Sue with Bill Shoemaker. Well, Bill said he thought it was a little tougher race than they expected, and I saw Gary Jones, who trains her, and he said he feels like he's come bear hunting with a switch. <laughs> I think they're in a little tougher than they thought. Well, Gary Jones, of course, the trainer took him in last year. He had a bear on the track last year, so he's going after him with seldom seen Sue the filly, and historically, it's kind of tough. Again, only two fillies have ever won the Whitney in 59 years. They're loading him up for the 60th running of the Whitney Handicap. Gulch has gone in. As you take a look at the stakes and track record, one and the same for the mile and an eighth here. At a minute 47, a light breeze blowing up the track here. And a new record set today. They have broken the all-time attendance record. They do not know what the final count is, but the most people ever in history are here today. Isn't that incredible? And, of course, they're just gearing up for two weeks from today. The great Travers to be run with the Ali Sheba bet twice uh, matchup again. Look forward to there. There you see the five horse going through Java Gold. Of course, out of the starting gate, these horses may be thinking about the Travers in two weeks, too. These three-year-olds we're talking about. Java Gold may be certainly gone west. They're ready to go. Let's go upstairs to Marshall Cassidy, the yeah, call of the go. Whitney. They're all in line. Meryl, seldom seen Sue. The filly is going for the early lead. It's Gorky on the inside second. As the field approaches, the clubhouse turn. And a seldom seen Sue leads the way by only a neck. As Gorky moves alongside on the rail, and Gorky now gets the lead. Seldom seen Sue on the outside, back into second to by five, then gone west. Java go, luck we met, Gulch, and Broad Brush is seventh. The first quarter, 23 and two, and they're on to the back stretch. Seldom seen Sue on the outside, gets the lead again by about a half. Gorky on the rail, second to buy about four. Gone west is third by a length. Lock we met on the outside in fourth, then Java Gold and Gulch. About two to Broad Brush, still in seventh. Down the back stretch. The Philly continues to lead by a half. Seldom seen Sue on the outside, but now Gorky comes on again on the rail, and Gorky gets ahead in front. Seldom seen Sue on the outside, second by a half. Gone west. So on the outside, has moved into third and continues to gain ground. The half and 46 and two as they round the far turn. Gone west on the outside, now gets a narrow lead. Gorky is second, luck we met is third. Gaining ground on the rail is Gulch. On the outside, Java Gold farther out. Broad Brush makes a big move as they approach the top of the stretch. Three quarters, ten and two. It's Gulch on the rail now, leading by a half on the outside. Gone west, second by a half. Farther out, Broad Rush moving up, then Java Gold. Gulch has the lead at the eighth pole by a length. Gone west is second. Java Gold on the inside, now third. Broad Brush is back into fourth. Java Gold gaining ground on the outside of Gulch. They race to the wire. It's Gulch nearest the rail. Java Gold on the outside, closing. Java Gold gains the lead. Java Gold wins by a half. Then it's Gulch finishing second, a photo for third between Broadbrush and Gone West in the eighth race, which may handicap at Saratoga. 
Thank you, Marshall. And the three-year-olds have their day. And Java Gold is on his way to say, wait a minute, Ali Sheban bet twice. There may be another three-year-old on the block. Thinking of the Travers in two weeks here, where they expect all the records to fall again. This is a record-setting day here for the Whitney. But they're expecting big things in two weeks for the Travers Stakes here, that historic race that now looks like Java Gold, if everything comes out fine in this race, for Mac Miller, should be outstanding. 148 and 2 is the time. Remember, 147 was the stakes record. 148 and 2. Java Gold, 113 pounds, proves the best today among the Whitney Field. We'll be back. Time for Java Gold. Thought we'd see him in the Belmont, but a virus slowed him down there. Then he's been pretty much in allowance competition. But today he proved he's with the big boys. He won a grade one as a two-year-old. Now he's won a grade one as a three-year-old. The Whitney is Pat Day. The rider weighs in there. Makes it official here. Gone West, remember. Uh, finishing back to, up the track. We'll get a rundown on him as we take a look at Java Gold, the star. 113 pounds he carried. Chelsea, let's take a closer look at the race. All right, Chris, and here's how they looked as they rounded the turn for home. There you see Gulch on the rail. He had sneaked through on the rail to forge up to the lead alongside Gone West, who is one horse out from the rail. He had briefly had the lead earlier, and making a big move from far back on the far outside was Broad Brush, and tucked in behind them very craftily, waiting for room, was Java Gold with Pat Day. Now watch this. Gulch has gone for the lead. He looks like he's a home free winner. Gone West just there is not quite able to keep up, and Pat Day patiently waits for that opening to open up so that he doesn't have to swing around and when java gold sees daylight watch this move gulch looks like a winner jose santos probably thinks he's home free but watch this move by java gold remember that 113 pounds that's a light package sort of, sort of like driving a sports car through the stretch and there he goes a mile and a quarter is going to suit him fine chris thank you charlie java gold heads off the track finishing first gulch second broad brush third we'll be back in a moment 260 gulch at 420 and 280 and broad brush who gave 14 pounds to java gold and 10 pounds to gulch broad brush carrying 127 finishing third returning two dollars and 40 cents the official results now as we take a look at it running it down here it is of course java gold gulch and broad brush gone west woody stevens horse finished fourth laquamette fifth the uh, filly who set the early fraction seldom seen Sue was six. Gorky was seventh. Let's go to Chelsea Kenny. And this is Pat Day, and he's just shown you why he's always the leading rider uh, in this country. Pat, that was a great ride, but when I looked on the backside, you and uh, Gulch were head and head, and when you came to the quarter pole, there was a little distance between you. Yeah, there was, Chelsea. Uh, up around the turn, uh, I, I was forced to come around and seldom seen Sue, and uh, at that point, uh, Gulch got through on the fence and, and opened up a couple links on me, maybe more than that. Uh, and I was really, uh, I, I really wanted to come around horses. Uh, I really didn't want to be down on the fence like that. But I tell you, when, when we found a little daylight down on the rail, uh, down on the rail and, and was able to ask him to run this colt, just dropped his head and, and really finished plumb full of run. It was just a, it was just a, a very impressive race uh, for my colt. I think you'll be looking ahead now to Ali Sheba and Bet Twice and another eighth of a mile. Uh, I think you, I think another eighth of a mile will really fit this colt, and uh, I certainly I'm not afraid to take any three-year-old on in the country right now. Good. Congratulations, Pat. Thank you. All right, back to you, Chris. Java Gold ready to take a step up among the top three-year-olds in racing today. The first today, 173,100 for Java Gold. It's not only the owner, but the breeder, and of course, a new Hall of Fame member of the trainer, Mac Miller. Mr. Mellon, Java Gold, a little slow, uh, developing. Everybody waiting from the broad, waiting to get to the Belmont. What about this horse and the Travers coming up? Is this the one? Absolutely. But of course, the reason, uh, you know, I mi missed the Belmont on account of, uh, of the flu. Uh, then Mac brought him along very slowly with, with uh, two or three allowance races. And we think he's just ready now. Mac, against Ali Sheban, bet twice. How do you think Java Gold is not up there? Well, it'll be level weights, and um, I think it'll be exciting. This horse is still learning. Uh, he had some dirt in his face today, a lot of it, which he was really not accustomed to. And uh, he took it very well. I think he'll improve. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, Mac. Gulch, part of the entry of Peter Brandt and trainer Leroy Jolly. Gulch. Beat Broad Brush and eight other older horses in the Metropolitan Mile. Got an 18-pound weight break that day. Today he has a 10-pound weight break. Gulch was third in the classic The Belmont Stakes. Jose Santos, the rider, he has never lost on Gulch. There is on board. Bill Shoemaker, winner of almost 8,700 races, over 970 stakes wins, 241 races worth over $100,000. He has not won the Whitney. Bill Shoemaker. 
The three horse, the morning line favorite, the outstanding handicap, won the Bayshore and the Wood. The other part of the brand entry, 1A, this is Gorky. Not known much about this colt, been out just six times, lightest weight in the field, 105 pounds, just two career wins, has never been in the money in a stakes race. And this will be interesting to see how Gorky fits into the plans here of Leroy. The only filly in the field of the Whitney Handicap, and only two fillies have ever won this race in 59 runnings. Seldom seen Sue won the grade one Milady at Hollywood, a race you saw earlier here on the show. To mention the only filly in this field is at 16 outs, one seven over $317,000, and the Mass Jolly. Antonio Grail is the uh, rider, won 14 riding titles at Thistledown before moving on to New York from the great Panamanian Jockey School. And I want to meet Antonio Grayell because uh, he's one of 18 children. Gorky could be the rabbit for the early speed. Keep an eye on 1A. Number two, seldom seen Sue.